Good day, fellow investors. You all want stocks to buy. Whenever I analyze companies in the comments, Sven, yes, what is the buy? And in this video, I really want to discuss these 10 stocks where if you give me a million and say you have to invest in these, I would likely invest in seven or eight on these lists because from a risk reward chance perspective, also depending on the business return you want, all of these are a buy. So in this video, I really want to discuss the bullish thesis, the buy, and then also the value investing approach to these buys, because every stock is a buy at some stock price, depending what happens with it, depending how it fits you. So let's really discuss 10 buys, no arguing about it, but the key is that you understand how the risk and reward of these buys fits you. If you enjoy this content, the stock analysis, the risk and reward that we do here from a value investing perspective, please buy that like button and also subscribe if you haven't and click that notification bell to see which video fits your investing requirements. Let's start. Number one. Warren Buffett owns it. He says he wants to buy more under 150 and that is Apple. So if we look at Apple's stock price, it went lower from the 178. Warren Buffett bought 600 million here at 150 and now we are already much lower than that. So it is a definite buy if Warren Buffett is adding. If we check what Warren Buffett did, so he added 4 million shares here. I'm really, really curious how many shares he added this quarter. So I would not be surprised with a 10 billion spend increase and it makes 41% of his stock market portfolio. So Warren Buffett portfolio, you can see here far above anything else, you can see 41%. So Warren Buffett is very long Apple and he is recommending it as a buy. Now you have to understand whether Apple is a buy for you. Let's look at the buy bullish thesis. I've looked here at Morningstar and they say it is fair fairly valued now close to their fair value of 130. And here I really want to discuss what is priced in in that stock price, what is Morningstar seeing as value. So first is the stickiness of Apple's devices with the customer base. So 90% of US-based iPhone users said they plan to remain loyal to future Apple devices. So that's extremely important in the environment. Apple created that ecosystem of 1.8 billion devices at the end of 2021 up 9% from a year prior, showing the strong stickiness of Apple. And that stickiness leads to huge free cash flows of around net income, free cash flows of around 100 billion per year. So if I look at my public comparative stocks table, you can download this in the link in the description below. If you want to check the premium, you can always check it on my stock market research platform. So let's click on Apple's valuation. And here I have used 100 billion or cash flow per share of six. And then over the next 10 years, if Apple grows 8% per year, keep in mind this growth rate includes buybacks. So 100 million of buybacks is 4% growth just on buybacks, even if net income stagnates. And then we have services growing extremely fast. We have also other products not stagnating, which means that Apple should be able, all else equal, to grow at 8% per year. If it grows at 8% per year, and if we expect a 7% 10-year return, then Apple is fairly valued at 130. So that is not a bad return. And if you like 7%, Warren Buffett likely likes 7%, then this is a strong buy. Even better, if we are just an itsy bitsy more exuberant, so 5% business growth, 4 or 5% buybacks over time, give the 1% dividend yield also into the return, and then 8% subsequently, 10% expected return, just the faster growth rate gives it a buy 
at 150, exactly what Warren Buffett was happy paying. So nothing wrong with that. 10% is a stellar return and Apple is a great business, great product, a loyal customer base, sticky. So if you want to return in the high single digits, most likely, then Apple at current prices is a buy. Now, the second buy and Many say Berkshire, Sven, can you reanalyze it? And I'm always reiterating myself, Berkshire as a business is always a buy, no matter what price you pay. What price you pay will have an impact on your long-term return, but I can be pretty sure that with Berkshire, there will be a return. That's the core of investing. You want to achieve returns with long-term safety of principle. And that is what Berkshire offers. And therefore it is, in my book, always a buy. And then you just have to see at what price Berkshire fits you. If we look at Berkshire, it has an amazing stock market portfolio. And of course, Apple, we already mentioned at the top holding there, but it also has all these companies as wholly owned from railroads, from insurance, where they get the float. So an index in itself, but an index with great companies always focused on risks and always focused on slowly and steadily getting rich slowly, which is something that very, very few other investment opportunities offer. If we go again to our valuation table, I also made all the videos analyzing these things more in detail. You can check here for all the details, but I'll also put the links in the description below. If we click on Berkshire earnings per share for the B share, B and A are equal shares, don't get confused there. One A share is 1,500 B shares. And if we look there and if we estimate 6% growth rate ahead, just 6% over the next 10 years, which Buffett should be able to do, he might do even better, a 7% expected long-term return. And then the intrinsic value for me is 269. So we said, 270 for a 7% long-term return and Berkshire is exactly there. So really, really, again, a good buy if you want to accumulate. Of course, from an investment perspective, the lower it goes, Berkshire, the better is a buy. Of course, here it is a better buy than here, but now it is a better buy than here. And you have to compare these options with your other investment opportunities and then see which one best fits you. From a valuation standpoint, Berkshire makes around 28 billion per year, plus around 10 billion from those hidden earnings because only the dividends received from these companies are accounted in Berkshire's net income statement. The hidden earnings, the earnings that Apple and all other companies reinvest to grow their businesses or do buybacks is not reflected in Berkshire's income statement. So always think that when it comes to valuating Berkshire. And as I said, around 36 billion or $15 per share. If they grow faster and terminal multiple is 25, then it is a strong buy for a return here. Next stock that is a strong buy also is Intel. We made already a few videos on Intel, but really you have to understand the risk and reward and also the long-term investing strategy here. So if you look at, for example, Seth Klarman, it is one of his top holdings, even if he has been divesting a little bit lately, but still held largely, it is 8% of his portfolio. Here, Intel was another company, was a buyback company focused on those cash flows. And now Intel has been transformed into a growth company. So that is the focus, but growth has much more ups and downs but now that growth is even cheaper. And why Intel stock has recently declined. So on June 10th, Morgan Stanley said that he remains cautious about Intel due to the company's capital spending efforts, which include plans for a massive new foundry, cheap producing facility. So Moore said that Intel might succeed, but that is very, very risky. And 
Investors turned against Intel earlier in the week when chief financial officer spoke at an investment conference and suggested that the company may see some bumps in the road in the coming months. And Intel, if you check my research platform and the covered stocks, Intel is a free preview. So you can read here all my past research on Intel and how it is, yes, a buy. But I also explained how the investing cycle is always something to watch because when a company starts a big change then all the old investors get impatient and new investors have to replace that but when you have a five to ten year project there will always be bumps but if the market doesn't like something that is bumps so everyone was very very exuberant in the tech growth stock really really good but then Everyone changed their opinion. Oh, it's going to last long. Who knows? Who knows? And what's happening is that it's getting cheaper and cheaper. Here you can read what I wrote about it, my strategy, and really also focus on the investment scenario. So reward, it will likely double by 2026. But as I say here, if they miss the set growth targets, having the, a lower than expected return, what Morgan Stanley said, could be due to competition, economic situation, demand, hard to predict, then it might get ugly. Value investing strategy, wait for an absolute bargain where you can't lose and left is only the upside. So market capitalization, 150 billion and lower, all else equal. Of course, normal investing strategy if you look at the company and the growth and everything, if it works, then you look at 15% per year over the longer. And I think I wrote something that in the 20s, it might be that absolute bargain. So that's something I'm watching. I'm watching the cycle and I want to nail that cycle when it, the market is an absolute pessimism and it just starts exploding. From a business perspective, everything, it looks like a buy now, but how good of a buy it depends on how much time do you spend analyzing and then also patiently waiting for uh, the opportunity. And that is, this is something again that the market has been chilling about. So growth for semiconductors was really great in the last two years, but it is expected to slow down a little bit. So the huge investments there that Intel is doing might have some bumps ahead and the market hates uncertainty. But it is a great company. It is investing for the future. A year ago, investing for the future was all that mattered. Now, investing for the future is uncertain, crazy and scary. So if you do the opposite, then you will be rewarded. But when it comes to Intel, things might start improving by 2024, likely 2025, 2026. And then when something like that happens, first the market sees short term, so they start selling, which might create more opportunities. Of course, this is imperfect as a strategy because you never know. Intel can double in the next 12 months. That's also possible. But what I do is I follow a list on my stock market research platform, over 30, 40, 50 companies. And then when I know, okay, this is a buy, like these 10 stocks are at some price for sure, then you say, okay, now it seems like the point of maximum pessimism and that's when you buy, that's investing. Next business to buy. Stanley Druckermiller said that Google is probably the best business that exists in the world now. So if you buy the best business, you can't go wrong. And if we look at Morningstar, the fair value is 50% above the last close. If we look at what they are pricing in, they're pricing in a five-year growth rate of 16% and an average mo operating margin of 27%. We all know Google, you're using it now. Did you subscribe? If we look at the stock price, it has been subdued lately, which creates an opportunity to buy a great business at a lower price. Of course, it has been much lower in the past. And, and if we look at Seth Klarman's portfolio, here is Google, 7.3% of the portfolio. So big, bigger buys in the past. And now he's just likely managing the position. But I'm curious how many of these investors will add Google here. Google is also here on my list. So uh, earnings per share, 
growth I had 15 and 10 percent Morningstar put 16 percent and then let's say 12 percent with a terminal multiple this is too, too much uh, 30 30 let's put 20 and you can see that the fair value for a 10% return is 2,800 if they just keep on growing. And even these ads by Google when I will try to take uh, something out of it. So uh, stop seeing this ad. Ah, you cannot destroy that. Oh yes, I can. So Google is everywhere. Wherever you move, there is Google. And this is now the cash flow that you can compare to the market capitalization. 67 billion, so 1.5 trillion price earnings ratio of 20 so for a great company for one of the greatest businesses out there 20 is not bad another company owned by bill ackman restaurants brands international so restaurant brands international also the stock subdued also you don't have the jump that many companies had during the pandemic still very very stable and at five year lows excluding this panicky times. so i have researched this as my part of my spawners that you suggested on the list and the valuation is in line with the market likely 10 percent ahead bill ackman the great bill ackman owns it huge dividend yield now not really stellar numbers but if you look at the cash flow have good cash flows good margins growth by acquisition mostly so they are increasing that and buying new companies and then scaling on that but they have been growing in the past and if they continue doing like that they should do really well they expect wide sales growth of 7% if you add the free cash flow return there also from repurchases that should look on the current P ratio of 20, it is a return of 12% going forward. So all looks great that there is some debt, but they are working on lowering it. So Ackman also increases the stake in Tim Hortons and the stock is where he bought it. So we did this video on Netflix. We know that Ackman is usually right four out of five times. He was wrong on Netflix. So we have now four stocks to take from him that are strong buys and that will likely do good. And you can see here the buys Bill Ackman. Now we are then again at the same stock price. Next company, Starbucks. Again, a great company at cheaper prices. And I'll put the link in the description to this video. We discussed now the new CEO the old CEO is transforming the company but if they manage to turn around those earnings investments and put it back to the growth story there is nothing wrong with it and there will be likely a very good return if we go here you have here the link to the video analysis and if we check here out if they grow nine percent per year you can expect a ten percent long-term return from the current stock price of around 80 with the dividend and everything of course if they grow just seven percent which is possible but more conservative then a buy price would be a 55 for a 10 percent return but the seven percent return and we are already close to the current buy price so again nothing wrong with starbucks looks like another great company selling at a discount now again another buy microsoft same as google the stock is down because they warned on profits of course after the great pandemic years when everyone was spending on software and everything they now warned on profits but if we look at microsoft now it is significantly cheaper and getting cheaper but again, Ken Fisher owns it, Terry Smith, so Jeremy Grantham, all great things. And if we look at the earnings over time, just up, up and up, 71 billion now. So they even lower their debt there. So nothing wrong with the business. They will likely keep on churning cash, keep on growing over the long term. So another great business now selling at a discount. The market cap is 1.83 trillion and you can see here okay 25 what's that 25 p ratio but if they can keep growing over the long term there should not be anything wrong with that and then 
therefore again another buy of course the lower the stock price the better the buy is but still you can expect long-term good returns here hpq the cash flow company even warren buffett bought so warren buffett you can see here bought at maybe even higher prices than we are now then the stock jumped 15 percent when it was announced that warren buffett bought but if you look at HP, you can see stable earnings, quarterly, let's put annual, but we have had some great years, 6 billion, 2 billion, 4 billion, 3 billion. So on average around 3, 4 billion. And that is a 10% yield on the market cap and therefore a buy. Currently a very low price earnings ratio, but this will likely return to the mean of around 10 and nothing wrong with the company doing buybacks and creating so value for shareholders Warren Buffett as we said likes it Jeremy Grantham even Kathy Wood so nothing wrong there with HP of course if pandemic spending declines for such products it will be a little bit lower but then again it might rebound over time you never know the trend is positive for the industry I have checked here so the growing dividend, really, really very positive cash flows that are the core of investing. And if they just keep even pre-pandemic cash flows, they look cheap. And that is the opportunity there. Now, next stock, Facebook, the metaverse, extremely cheap, right? If we look at who owns it, Ken Fisher, the great Lee Lu that we discussed in a few videos, Seth Klarman owns it, Ken Griffin, Joel Greenblatt, and even I think Michael Burry owns it, which is a significant part of his portfolio, Mario, Mario Gabelli, Ray Dalio, Prem Watsa. So everyone owns except Jim Chanos, who is always short anything. So that is Facebook and we made a few videos discussing it. I said why I don't like it anymore, why I prefer selling it, whether it is growth to value, but I explained the risk and reward here, how it is definitely a positive risk reward and you just have to see how it fits you. That's the key. Of course, the lower the price goes, the better of an investment it will uh, be. I don't know where we sold here or somewhere 200 now. It is much lower. So that is something interesting. And then you have to see how it fits you. The market cap is now 560. The billion and if we look at the earnings here earnings of 40 billion that's a price earnings ratio of 10 of course advertising are a little bit low but if they can keep growing if they can develop the metaverse then it will really really be cheap at these prices price earnings ratio of 15 everyone sees it as extremely cheap and we have discussed here the risk and reward which makes it a buy because of the risk and reward it's most likely that it will go up can go also lower but that's again you have to compare the risk and rewards to reach your goals it is definitely a buy now a stock that is always a buy on youtube is tesla because the stock will go to the moon if we look at the stock price it is significantly subdued now and now you have to buy it before it jumps to four thousand because of course, those who bought here did good and now we have the last opportunities to buy it low. If we look at the specialist on Tesla, if we look at ARK's recent research, we see that we have a target of 4,600 per share, which means that Tesla will 7x over the next four years, which is a pretty good uh, return. And if you don't invest now, you will miss out. The thesis there, they have both the bull and bear cases. Of course, I can't argue with them because they are the specialists. And worst case scenario, there is a 25% probability that Tesla could be worth only 2,900 per share or less in 2026. So worst case scenario, you 4x your uh, money. And of course, that is not much, but I think that we could live with only 4x over four uh, years. Of course, if they do well, then we have our 7x. And in case there is the bull ratio and the market gets exuberant about it, so the market is willing to pay a premium for it, not fairly valued like now or being totally cheap like now, then we can make 
almost 10 times our uh, money. They have looked at what is this 38 independent inputs to simulate their uh, prices. Of the base of their assumptions is that electric vehicles will make 57% of the company's revenue, but at lower margins. And the core of the investment thesis is the robot taxis revenue. So in four years, we'll all be riding around in Teslas with robot taxis. And actually, I here and there I go fishing, but I live two hours from the sea. And I would love actually that solution so that I can work, prepare videos while my Tesla drives me automatically up and down in more safety than what I can do as a human. So nothing wrong there. Forex, worst case scenario, which makes Tesla stock an absolute screaming buy at these levels. Likely compared to all the risk and reward of the others, no stock comes even close because there are some risks with the others. With Tesla, there is absolutely no risk. So I hope you really like the 10 bullish thesis and of course everything else related to it. Top buys of course Tesla at number one and then if you want to diversify by why would you diversify because Tesla worst case scenario offer 4x all the others best case scenario offer 2x over the next four years. So really no point in talking anything else than the great Tesla. But I have to disappoint you there. This is at the end the value investing channel. And as we discussed yesterday with Seth Klarman, we first focus on risk. And then when we find investments that have very, very low risk, where worst case scenario, everything is already priced in, then and only then we buy and we let the upside develop by itself. So Apple, for example, we look at what is the growth there, but is it that simple? If I look at the risks of Apple, there is the iPhone cycle, there is the cycle that there is always these huge jumps and then a slowdown a year or two or no growth. If I look at Apple's free cash flows, yes, those are now a hundred billion. But what if we just revert to, let's say, to 2018, if we just revert to that 64 billion, and then we attach a P ratio of 20, that's 1.2 trillion. That is, what is that? 40% still down. That's the risk. That is something you have to keep in mind as the downside. Has happened in the past with Apple stock, will most likely happen again. Maybe the cycle will be a little bit more subdued because of the diversification from just the iPhone, the services and everything, but there is still significant risk. Berkshire risks. Valuation, now it is expensive. I prefer it at a 10% earnings yield, P ratio of 10. Now it is significantly overvalued from that historical Berkshire perspective. Here and there, Berkshire trades at the P ratio of 10. And that's the time you have to nail it as a value investor. Intel risks there, if the thesis develops, but two years later, the market will destroy it because the market doesn't like seeing spending 20, 30 billion per year and not getting immediate returns. And Intel will not get immediate returns. Intel might start getting returns from 2026. So it's much better to put your money now in Tesla for exit. And then in 2026, you put it in Intel for another two, three X. And that's even better than just keeping your money in Tesla in the bullish thesis. <laughs> but there are risks, uh, Intel investments, they can be too early, too late for their investments, internal development, hiccups, issues, whatever. Google risk. So the growth, the Valuations that we are looking now are based on 2021, which was a remarkable year for Google. If we look at the cash flows, 67 billion, but what if the cash flows revert to the base of 2019? What if that happens, then the complete valuation of the company is toasted and you are looking at a severe decline. We never know regulation, this or that, less growth, competition, anything can happen. And that's always something you have to keep in mind. It is unlikely, but it is very possible, maybe just to 2020 levels from a cash flow perspective. And that already changes a lot from the seeming bargain now. With 
restaurant brand international so great company but then there is again the restaurant and the whole industry is a very very difficult industry of course top brands top everything but if there is less spending less this less that changing consumer preferences and that has happened to many many restaurants it doesn't look like but there can always be the, these changes in cash flows increased labor costs, increased input costs, where you can't raise prices, can't transfer prices to the consumer. So always something due to the competition, due to whatever. There is always risk. And that's why it looks like a little bit cheaper now. If they can't grow at 7%, but just at 2%, there you go. Same with Starbucks, growth, spending, the cost of a cup of coffee. Maybe people won't have $19 to spend on a cup of coffee in the future. So that is the risk. For now, everything is working, but there is always risk when it comes to investing. And as we said, now it's even a little bit too pricey for the risk and reward. You can find better. Microsoft, we just had the guidance check where they say we are going to slow down, guys. 2021 was a great year. Now it will be slower. And negative news, what if it continues to be slower and slower? Then the stock will look ugly and ugly and uglier. And then only the brave investors that really like the company will just be adding and be getting happier and happier. All these businesses are like that. So this is really, okay, good business. The lower, the better. HPQ, half the cash flows. So if that happens and there is really a slowdown, even in that cycle, it goes even lower and lower. Again, the stock can get much, much uglier despite the buybacks, despite the cash flows, despite everything. That's the risk of investing, people. With Facebook, if the issues are really structural, if there is so much competition now in the sector and people are going away from the Instagrams, from the Facebook to the TikToks, to Snapchats, to whatever, to something else, because you only have so much time that you can spend on your screen, you're watching YouTube now, not Facebook, then if that is a structural, then the cash flows will slow down, advertisers will go away, everything will spiral back down less people less content less everything there and then you see such social platforms slowly and steadily decline and facebook managed to reinvent itself for already a few times but what if it doesn't then it will just look uglier and uglier that is the risk and reward and one risk that i don't like i wouldn't take tesla what if robo taxis don't happen and what is that? 76% of their valuation is based on that. So uh, what if it doesn't happen? What if there is competition? What if margins go down? What if this? What if that? What if there is a limit to the growth and how many cars they can sell? That is the risk, not the bear case scenario that ARK showed, but there is a really, really big risk there. And uh, it is a bet, yes. It is a bet on the inventiveness, on the technology, on the technology advantage. So you have to see how that bet fits you. Definitely not for value investing. But now, if you really give me a billion to invest and I have to put it in some way, something, Apple is still a little bit too pricey for me. Berkshire, also too pricey, would prefer lower. Intel, I would love to find it at the margin of safety of 20. Google, I would love to see it at 1 trillion because of the risk of the growth base being a little bit higher for the growth ahead. Difficult business, consumer trends, Starbucks at 50, very interesting. Microsoft at a trillion, interesting. HPQ at 15, the cycle, very interesting. Meta might be at the bottom, so we might take a risk there. So if you force me to put a million into these stocks, at current prices, maybe I would put, of course, the most in Intel. This is something interesting from a risk reward perspective. And then I would diversify around one, Mm, a little bit less here. This is always something that is very interesting. So be ready to add more. Google is again, something very interesting. Berkshire, if I have to start a position with a billion, not a problem. Apple already a little bit expensive, but we can start and then we can add more. All, all great businesses that should be there is a risk, a structural risk with Meta, but okay, that is something I can survive in a diversified portfolio. So I'm looking forward to your billions and then I'll simply start buying. Just send them 
over. So hope you enjoyed this risk and reward stocks to buy perspective. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know which stocks you would add to this list and I'll see you in the next video.